right, so now we will go on to uh, Madam Prosecutor. I let I have the prosecution go first because I always give the defendant the last word. Thank you, Your Honor. First, I would like to start with the victim impact statements. There are several members of the family present here in court today um, and some family also in Microsoft Teams who would like to make impact statements. I would just let the court know I, I did submit uh, a numerous victim impact statements from both uh, friends and family of both Anna and Ray. I know the court has had an opportunity to read those. Uh, many of those members are here in court today. Um, not everyone will give their impact statement again, but there are some family members that would like to, and I will just uh, go in order. State your first, uh, your first and last name, and spell both those names for the record. Yeah, Hermes. Sorry. Throughout the church. 
child. He pretended to be surprised that Anna Marie wanted to leave him. As you can see, my sister tried so hard to forgive him and have him so many chances and covered all his abuse and lies. She did not even tell me about the abuse just to protect him. But he took advantage of her and kept abusing her in a way. But he lived at our families when he lived at the family house and also on the phone. He talked like, like an angel and promised he would never get hurt my sister. And Ali, if I had known what my sister had been through with all the abuse, if I had known, if I had known, I would have flown again to see her and do my best to take her and have her away from you. You didn't take away my sister's life, but also my niece's future because of your selfish, selfishness, the damage you have caused impossible to measure. And my parents trusted you when you brought Anna Marie and Amira from the Philippines to the States. You promised my mom that you would take good care of them, as my parents did for Anna Marie and Amira back in the Philippines. But I had no idea that my sister's life would be miserable living with you. She did my sister like she didn't matter, but she mattered. We love and miss her so much. My sister wanted the best for you and Anna Marie, but you messed up, Allie. Did you mess up? The person who said good things about you was my sister. I can imagine how this evil act has changed all of our lives, especially Amira's life. Amira lost the two people that were supposed to love and care for her, especially her favorite person and loving mother. You took that away from Amira. But off, off the people you killed had a beautiful life ahead. Many people love and care for both of them. You ruined so many people's lives because of your selfish action. You were the one who messed up and now you are trying to make people believe you're a victim in this case. I knew when I first met you in the Philippines that you were not a good fit for my sister. After you disrespected my mother in front of me, and I should have followed my instinct. Only you know how many years my sister suffered from your hands. But she still tried to stay and love you, hoping that you will change. I told you before that if you didn't want her, you could have brought my sister back to us. You could have brought my sister back in the mirror back to us. But you made a choice. You made a choice. I'm not realizing why she was afraid to visit us, even though we're just like a few hours away. It is because you were controlling her and Amira, so they couldn't tell how evil you were. And her and Amira were planning to visit us in December 2021 for family gathering, but you didn't give my sister help that chance. Nobody, nobody deserved to be treated like you treated my sister. You ruined her life, you mocked her, you disrespected her, you abused her, you controlled her, and then you killed her. You killed the only person who cared for you and loved you. In your honor, the loss of Anna Marie is an unimaginable tra tragedy for our family. Her death has left us all heartbroken. A family gathering feel empty without her laughter and her presence. Her daughter and mother have lost a loving and nurturing mother, and we, we lost a sister, a daughter, and a friend. The pain of her absence is the constant reminder of emptiness that you can never be filled. We wake up every day wishing that this nightmare was just a bad dream, but the reality that we are forced now to live without her. The trauma of losing my sister in such a horrific is something we will carry with us forever. No sentence can ever bring my sister back to us. <coughs> but we hope that justice will be served and that the person responsible for the highest crime 
will be held accountable. We hope that through this statement, you can understand the depth of our loss and lasting impact it has had on our lives. For me, the death penalty is what this man deserved. He has no more place on this earth, but I will agree with what my parents say, a life sentence without parole. Thank you for allowing our family to have a voice and for considering the profound impact this loss has had on our family. Thank you, Anwar. Oh, I And now she's going to read a statement from As Mother, Amalia Miller, A M A L I A. Your Honor, hello, I am Amalia Miller, the mother of Anna Maria Bulevan, the wife of Alia Bulevan. I cannot fully comprehend why Ali would kill my daughter. The pain. The pain is unbearable, and I cannot accept what happened to her. As her mother, I knew my daughter well. She was a kind and loving child who never caused me any trouble. She was a caring parent, a thoughtful sister, and always cheerful and playful. Her loss is incredibly painful. Painful for me as a as a mother, the impact of what happened has left me devastated. I cannot sleep when I think about her. My only prayer now is for justice to be served for my daughter and for the person responsible to be punished. We ask for justice and for a life sentence without parole. For Ali Abulaban, only then will I and my family My family finds some peace of mind. It is also painful for me to know that my granddaughter will grow up without her mother. Every time I remember, I cannot help but cry. And I have lost my appetite. My prayers are my only source of strength. And I pray for the end of this morning, morning for my daughter. I love her dearly, and the pain is overwhelming. I pray for the strength to cope with this agony. I rely on the Lord to help me end this pain and longing, as does my family. I am grateful for the answer prayers, and I hope my plea for Ali Abulamad punish, punishment, life imprisonment without the possibility of release, will, will be heard. I trust that you will listen to my request, sincerely, Molly Miller. Okay, next it will be Maria Carnegie. She would like me to read her statement. <clears throat> My son Ray was a good man, hardworking, noble, without malice. A good son, brother, grandson, uncle, nephew, and friend. Full of light with a whole life ahead of him that had so much to live still. I, as a mother, ask of you to be just and give Ali Abulaban a sentence of life in prison for taking the life of my son and his friend Anna in such a cruel and coward way. For him to pay the unbearable damages that he has caused us. Please free us from suffering this agony and despair and give us full and legitimate justice that our soul, mind, and broken hearts from such pain need. The loss of my son has left unimaginable pain and a huge hole in my heart and soul. Your Honor, we thank you for your attention. Okay, next, Jordana Barrett.
morning, Mr. Donald Barrett. And Rayburn was my brother. I address this court to you to express how the crime committed by the defendant has affected not only me, but all family members and friends. He had a beautiful soul, and this is why I know he is resting in peace. But losing him has left me feeling empty and with a lot of emotional damage. I lost my baby brother, my baby brother and my best friend. The way he had to leave this earth is not something that he deserved. He was a kind, loving person. He deserved a chance in this life. He always wanted to be a father and have a family and live a happy life. And all of that was robbed from him. What the defendant has done with this horrible crime has destroyed our family. Our holidays will never be the same because we are missing a big part of it. This grief and sadness will never be the same because we are missing a big part of it. Okay. Because we are never going to be able to hug our brother on Christmas, on New Year's, or on his birthday. I know how much he loved being, he loved being with our, all of his family on all holidays. He never missed a walk that won't gather me. So I'm here today to ask for justice for my brother Ray, for Anna, and for my mom, who has to suffer the rest of her life knowing that her youngest son and her baby was taken from her in such a violent way. And that is something that no mother has, should ever have to go through. The defendant deserves to pay for this horrible crime with the highest sentence possible. He has destroyed many lives and victims to serve justice. Thank you, Donna. Okay, let's have Baron do next. Your Honor, my name is Lisbeth Barron, and Rayburn Barron was my baby brother. Even though Ray was the youngest of the five of us, he was very responsible and mature, mature from a young age. A true gentleman, always respectful. He was the most loving and kind person to everyone, family, friends, partners, even strangers, no matter the age. He loved to spend time with family and friends. Even if he could not be there in person, he would take time to reach out by call or message. In every family event, he would go around and have a moment with each and every one of us, from the oldest to the youngest. His motto was family comes first. He was a peacemaker, always bringing us together. He was loved by many people and he touched the hearts of everyone that had the privilege of meeting him. There was not an ounce of bad in him, always trying to help others, even animals. We were not allowed to kill even a spider in his presence. He would kindly just remove it from our home and safely take it outside back to nature. Many of us suffer domestic violence or traumas in our lives, but we choose to be different, to be better. Ray did. He was a great son, brother, cousin, nephew, grandson, friend. And he would have been a great husband and father had the opportunity not be taken away from him. We appreciate and thank all the hard work that the DA team did and the jury for the fair verdict decision that they made. It has taken every strength left in us to be present at court for almost a month and hear and see things that will forever haunt our minds and hearts. But we felt it was important to show our support for everyone that has been hurt with these horrible crimes and see that justice is served. We often are told that we are such a strong family for surviving such tragedy. But the reality is that this has been the most difficult event we have ever experienced and many of us are left broken. The pain and trauma of losing our brother the way we did is so painful that we have to continue living a normal and healthy life. Some of us are struggling with depression, anxiety, panic, panic attacks, nightmares, and more. It has been almost three years since, since our loved ones were taken away from us 
and we have not been able to have closure waiting for this trap. Just when we feel it's possible to move on and have peace of mind after the verdict, we hear about the intentions of the defendant to ask for even more time in a new trial. Ali Abulawan not only took the lives of two good people, but he also took part of everyone's life that knew Ray and Anna. He did not give Ray or Anna any time to defend themselves or a chance to continue their lives. He does not deserve any more consideration or compassion. That's why we ask with all our hearts that you consider our pain and suffering and deny any further requests from him. Please give us all the justice we deserve so we can finally start healing and find peace in our hearts. Thank you, Mr. And next will be Sylvia. You deserve no better. 
Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Sorry, there should be one more speaker. Let me make sure he's on Teams. All right, while you're doing that, uh, to the victim's family, there's, there's something that I'd like to point out in these circumstances because it's often not understood. Can I just to the sure. Is the sentence pronounced today does not reflect the value of your loved ones, the value of human life. It can't do that. And I, I want to emphasize that, that the sentence today does not reflect your love for them or their value as human beings. It's society's only way to punish people who have done wrong. Uh, but it obviously cannot restore their lives. The only thing this court can do in society in general is to take away his freedom. But that's it. And I, I just want to point that out because oftentimes people think that the sentence that is handed down uh, is a reflection of either the crime or the person who is is not is now deceased. And it, that's just not true. I, I just want to point that out to you so that you understand. All right, now prosecutor. Thank you. The next statement will be from Ron Miller. All right, this is uh, Ron Miller. I'm the father of uh, Anne Marie. My wife and I would receive a phone call from one of Anne Marie's friends from San Diego back in the, the day of the murder. And nobody knew what happened. They just knew that they just almost said, uh, they couldn't get in to see Anna Marie. The apartment was surrounded by police. So I called the San Diego Police Department from the Philippines here where we live. But I was informed that even though I'm the father and the mother is right here with me, that they could not give us any information over the phone. They couldn't tell us anything. And I, had, I gave them the name of our daughter in New Mexico so they could call her. In my gut, I already knew what happened. I already knew that she had been murdered. And we just waited for the final word from our daughter when they got the word from the police department that she was murdered. I'm kind of off script here a little bit. You got it. Please understand, this is extremely hard. We had Anne Marie's body returned here to the Philippines where we could lay her to rest here and where we go and visit her once a week. We go to the cemetery and visit with her. We haven't got over this. Imagine if you get her, maybe you can't. How I feel about losing my youngest child to the man that promised to love and take care of her and her granddaughter. And he ends up murdering her. My wife and I, we tried to understand why or what could we have done to have changed the outcome of this. Watching the trial, hearing the verdict of guilty and first degree murder does bring some closure. But I would love to see a sentence of life in prison without parole. This is what this guy needs. He, I don't consider him a man. A man would not do this. But I, I hope he gets life in prison without parole. I want him to rot in prison for what he done to my daughter. She was a beautiful, loving woman. She done everything for everybody else, always putting herself flat. I ask that you please take into account the, all the consequences of the suffering that we as the victims and the family of the victims have gone through and continue, to, and continue to go through because the choices made by this person. 
I believe right now that the defendant is a danger to the community. He knew what he was doing from the first moment that he started abusing the Anna Marie. <coughs> and I ask you please not forget who the victims are here, because he is not. He, is, he deserves to be punished after terrifying and abusing Anna Marie and his daughter, who witnessed so much of the abuse and for making us live in this deep pain for the rest of our life. He doesn't deserve her. That he has no mercy for my daughter in the brain. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Your Honor, for listening to all the impact statements. Uh, I would ask the court to sentence the defendant consecutively on this case for counts one and two. Uh, I did, in my brief, cite a case, People versus Garnica, that um, stands for the fact that the court can impose consecutive life without parole sentences for each murder. Uh, since there are two murders here, there's no murder uh, more deserving than, an, uh, than another for the LWAP sentence um, or a state sentence, and so I would ask the court to sentence the defendant consecutively. Uh, count one, LWAP, life without parole, plus 25 years to life for the enhancement and a consecutive LWAP sentence on count two with another consecutive 25 to life sentence for the enhancement. Uh, I laid all of the aggravating factors in this case out in my brief. Uh, I would ask the court not to strike any of the enhancements. Uh, the aggravating factors here far outweigh any mitigating in the fact that this crime was involved great violence, it involved death, it involved the use of a firearm, it involved two vulnerable victims who were unarmed. Uh, the defendant took advantage of a position of trust using a key card to enter an apartment he no longer was living in. These were planned crimes, planned executions, not heat of passion crimes. And the defendant has shown that he has exhibited violent conduct, uh, proving he's a danger to society. Uh, so for all of the aggravating factors here, I would ask the court not only not to strike any enhancements, but to I give the defendant a sentence of consecutive LWAP terms. Uh, I would also ask for restitution. Uh, there is a victim compensation board claim for $12,890. That is for the funeral expenses for both Anna and Ray. There are also two other requests. Uh, Amalia Miller and Ron Miller, Anna's parents, uh, live in the Philippines. They had to get a visa to fly out here. That was quite a lengthy process. Uh, they wanted to be out here for the trial. Uh, they did fly out here. The trial ended up being continued after they were here. Uh, that flight cost was $3,324.24. Uh, the other request for restitution is to Herme Sartin, H-E-R-M-A-E-S-A-R-T-I-N. Uh, she had to fly out here three times, once for the funeral, once to take care and uh, close up Anna's apartment and the, uh, take the items from the apartment, and then flew here for sentencing to represent the family and make an impact statement. Uh, that amount requested is $1,214.66. Uh, under Penal Code 1202.4, uh, families of victims are entitled to economic losses. Uh, that includes economic losses for trial. Uh, I can give the court a citation to People versus Chrysler. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, today is really not the day to talk about this, I think. Uh, counsel, will your client waive his right to be present in any restitution hearing and we can sort this out at a later date? Uh, your Honor, I had an opportunity to speak with Mr. Boulevard prior to beginning the sentencing. He is prepared to stipulate to the restitution being sought by uh, the prosecution. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so the people would ask those amounts be ordered also for the court to reserve restitution for any uh, remaining amounts or counseling that is uh, sought in the future. Uh, I would ask the court, as the victims that have asked for the maximum sentence, uh, that is the only sentence that will properly punish this defendant, prevent his future crimes, deter others, and protect the community. Uh, after judgment in this case, uh, I have informed all parties that people are filing a penal code section 1203.01 statement uh, that's a packet that gets sent to cdcr with the defendant thank you